Now, my old mate, Bill Thompson, from Southern Metal Spinners in Adelaide, has come up with a new camp oven. Have a look at this. Just have a look at the thickness of them. Now, that's the lid. Got a little handle on it there like that. But we've still two, got two handles on the camp oven. Then there is a little trivet, and that trivet goes into the camp oven. And that allows the air to circulate underneath whatever you're cooking, and you won't burn it. Right out. These ones have been seasoned, and just to show you the thickness of the camp oven, have a look at this. <laughs> My ears are still ringing. And it doesn't even dit it. Bill, you've excelled yourself this time. He's come up with this great camp oven. And they're light enough to cart in the car with you. Now, as I said, this one's already been seasoned. But I'll show you how to season them. Easy. All we need is a little bit of oil and salt. And a cloth. Throw the cloth in, a little bit of oil in. Now I'm going to rub that around. Whoops, salt fell over. Just rub that around like that. Oh, I love these camp ovens. Put it around like that, a bit of salt in it. Now an old Chinaman taught us that. Just rub the bit of salt in it when you season in it, and it does a good job. Because they've been doing woks for hundreds and hundreds of years. Bill makes an excellent wok too. Now all we've got to do is take it to the fire. Sit that up there, because don't forget the lid. Now we're just going to sit that on there like that, because I want to do the sides too. Now after you've done the sides all the way around, it's just a matter of pulling that up there like that. How about that? Now. The lid will cook in. I'll put a bit of heat on the lid later on, but I'm going to sit that on there like that. See how easy the lid goes. Oh, Bill, these camp ovens are a dream. Now this is Southern Metal's medium-sized camp oven. What I'm going to show you today is how to cook a roast, a crown of lamb. A beautiful little crown. Look at like that. I had the butcher do that for me. Now, as I said before, now there is a trivet in here. And all I've got to do is put that in there so when I put the roast in, it's not going to be sitting on the bottom and burn the bottom of it and make it hard and ooh, yucky. We don't want that. There's only one more thing I've got to do is just rub a little bit of oil around that and we've got to cover the top of the bones. If we don't cover the top of the bone, they will burn and make it look horrible. So what I say by covering the top, we just go around like that. And stops the bones from going black. All these little tricks. One more thing, a little bit of oil. Just a tab. A little clean paper. I don't have a pastry brush. And I just put that around there like that, just all the way around. Whoop, one of my little silver things come off. No problem, just put it back on again. Now we just put the lid on. Over to the fire. Now these camp ovens, are deep enough to put a good roast in. Some of the old camp ovens are too shallow and you can't get a big roast in them. My hungry mob, you need a big roast. Right now, you need a shovel. So you sit like that, get that. Don't put your camp oven in the fire. Take the coals out and just sit it on there like that. Now, we're gonna sit the camp oven on. I don't want a great deal of heat on this because I want this to cook fairly steady. Oh, those coals are beautiful too. Put that out there like that. Now that should only take about half an hour to 35 minutes. I could cook it in about 20 minutes with a lot of heat on it. I don't want to do that. I don't want to bugger it up. I want it to cook just so it's simmering and it'll take about 35 minutes. Even 40 minutes won't hurt it. Now I'm going to show you the camp oven mate. A brilliant little bit of cooking gear. Bill, done it again. Have a look in here. And you set your camp oven in there, put the lid on, and it doesn't matter if it's blowing a gale. Out in the bush today, I'm going to make some 
homemade bread. Very simple recipe. All we've got to do is cut the packet with some flour in it. Now I'm going to keep a little bit of that flour. I'm going to put it over here and put it in there. That's enough about a cup of it there. That'll be do. Tip the rest in. Put that over there. Now, the yeast. You don't want to tip the whole lot of the yeast in. You can put too much in. One. Two. Two. Oh, I'll put a little bit more. You want a very big bit. Right up. Now. I'm going to put a tablespoon of sugar in here. You said, why is that silly old fella putting sugar in there? That's about a tablespoon. Mix that up. Now over here, we've got some warm water. I'm just going to put the warm water in that with the yeast, a bit of flour and a bit of sugar. Turn that around like that. And you know what that's going to do? That's going to get the yeast activated. And it'll start up. What it actually does, it gets the yeast working before I add it to the flour. Now you're watching about a couple of minutes that'll start to swell up. Right, let's have a look. Oh yes, the yeast is start to work. Now it seems by just putting that all that yeast in there, a little bit of warm water and sugar makes the yeast work and eats it. And now we've tipped that in there. And it won't take so long for it to pop up for us when we need it. We do need it, don't we? If people don't know what kneading is, I'll show you in a minute. We just stir that around now like that. Keep it in the bowl, Tomo. Getting a bit carried away here, aren't I? Now a little bit of cow, you can use water, I will use a little bit more of this warm water. Do I put it all in? Ta -da. Whoop. And then I'm going to put a bit of milk in there because I like the flavour. Give the yeast a bit of a treat today, I will. Ta -da, ta -da. Around we go. Same thing as I told you before. Work it around until it comes away from the bowl. Just like that. Yeah. See that? That's all ready. Get rid of that plastic bag, put it over here out the road. A little bit of flour on the board. Now all we gotta do now is just knead that up a bit. Now how do we know when it's kneaded enough? All you got to do is stick your finger in there. You see how it's coming back out again? Well, that's when it's kneaded enough. If it's just flour and water, you stick your finger in and it won't come back out again. See, you can hardly see where my finger went. Our bread has risen the second time. One more little thing to do to it before we put it into the oven. Ta -da. A little bit of milk on top. I want these to go nice and brown, have a nice crispy top on it. Oh. I'm going to show you a much easier way to cook with your camp oven mate. And I'm going to cook bread again. I made a little loaf of bread, same as I did before. Take the lid off, in goes the camp oven. And now, put that down there like that. There like that. On with the lid. Right up. Put that on there with him. Make sure it fits nice and snug. Now, when I light this, that's going to be only be about half an inch of flame. I'm going to leave it on there for about five minutes like that. Then I'm going to turn it down so it's not much more than a match head. And within no time at all, that bread will cook. How are we going to brown it? Well, stick around and I'll show you. 
Now, I'm just going to take this off. Oh, it's heavy. Just to show you. I'm going to turn that down. This is not a real good gas burner. So it's just got a little flame. You see that there? And on it comes again. Back with the lid. Make sure it's nice and snug. Now I could even turn that down a little bit more now that I haven't got the wind on it. That's one of the good things about the camp oven, mate. It protects against the wind. So now I can turn it down just a fraction more so it doesn't burn it. I'm only using one ring. And all the heat in there comes around like that and down on top of the bread and it will brown it. Now to tell the heat on one of these camp ovens, mates, camp oven mate, you've got to get it right, Tomo. You just put your hand here like that. Now you can feel that. Now, if it's too hot, just turn it down. That is perfect at the moment. I only have a little bit of gas, just about that much working on it. If you put too much gas, you'll burn them. What a brilliant idea. And look what I've got. A lovely loaf of bread. I'll take it over the table. I'll pull it out. get that out, all we got to do. How about that? <laughs> How about that? It doesn't get much better than that. That camp oven, mate, is outstanding. You know what? I've sat around thousands of campfires in my lifetime and cooked bread and scones and damper, but I've never ever been over to bake without heat on the top. Have a look at that. Lovely and brown. Hear it? Nice and hollow. That's what you've got to get with bread. Otherwise it'll be doughy inside. You've got to get that. Beautiful. Bill Thompson, camp oven mate, you are a genius. Now we've showed you a lot of easy ways to cook food, but we haven't showed you brekkie. Let's have a look at brekkie. Simple one. A couple of slices of bread, a bit of the old slippery stuff, Da -da, put plenty on it. Da -da, da -da, like that. Uh, put plenty on it. Why that's going? Oh, that out the road. Now, I'm going to use this. Makes it much easier. And you just push them out like that. Not going to waste that. I made a little bit bigger hole than I needed. Now, how are we going to do it? First off, let's light the gas. Bit of heat on there. Southern Metal Spinner's lid again. We're using it as a frying pan. Bit of slippery stuff on there. Now we drop that one in there. Upside down, see? Yeah. If you haven't got a cutter, all you do is do that. You don't waste a little bit. Put that over like that. Same again, just turn it over. Put your little bits in because that tastes good too. Whoop. Right on. Next step is our googie egg. Turn those over. Just let it have a lee. Get it in there so it cooks. <laughs> 